Now, one of the flies that is good for catching trout is called the Hawthorn fly. So I'm going to try and catch you one, yes, catch you one, to show you what they look like live. And there's a couple of pointers that I want you to take into consideration. One, a grown man going through the woods in the countryside, jumping around with what looks like a butterfly net, a bit dubious. But I figure, on a slight breeze like this, they're too high for me. If I can find a little bunch when the wind drops, I might be able to scoop some in and show you what they look like in the net. So what I'll be using is this. I just use this for scooping the leaves out of my fish pond. So I'm going to try and find somewhere. Generally when the wind's a bit still, it just comes off, you know, you get the heat at the right time, you get a drop in the breeze and they come and they're in front of the bushes. See if I can find one or two at least to show you. You can tell by the leaves moving here, I think there's a little bit too much breeze. I'm going to go down the end of the field, turn left. I think I'll be off the wind then. I might find a few there. Okay, I've got a bunch here that are within my height, see if I can scoop a few up for you and just spin the camera around. Right, I've got quite a few in there. I'm going to put it on the ground, see if I can get it in close up. Is there even one? Here, just dropped out. Okay, you see I've got a few in the, in the net here. I'm going to say first catch of the day, I'll see if I can get a close up of them. So now you've seen the fly, there's two things you should take into consideration. One, the actual size of the fly. It's quite small. Two, it's black. If you stick to those two predominantly target features, I feel you're going to catch a trout. I'm going to go trout fishing and see if I can get the nearest thing to one of those I can. There's another one. They are literally everywhere. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go and catch some more of these flies with my butterfly net.
and I brought that fly down here to Church Paddock Fishery, which is just outside Winchester in Hampshire. Very, very bright day, bit of easterly wind, so I probably won't use the big camera, just use a small one. It's very small, it's about one and a half acre, single lake, gene clear, and no giant fish in there, but there's some really good trout fishing. Could be some sight fishing here as well. And as you can see, on the edges of Winchester Town Centre, I suppose about a mile or so outside, very pretty little spot. Pleasant to fish, and I hope something's gonna eat my fly. So I feel one of the uh, selling points of this place is this little view here. Check out this, would you want this for a barbecue area or not? You've got your rod racks there, a nice big baldy balcony there like a veranda, tackle shops here, reception is in here, so if it's raining you can get in there and look at this, step up onto the boardwalk and you're overlooking the lake and the main pool so you can see it's a great view there we can just spotted a couple of trout to be honest gin clear it's got an oxygenator over there like a bubbler blowing over there that keeps plenty of oxygen in the water very very clear here very clear and a nice view somewhere to come and have lunch i will be having my lunch here because there's nothing better than sitting overlooking the lake that you're going to fish I see a rainbow down in amongst that weed there. Well, I've fished here a couple of times before and it's certainly matured and you've got some nice planting being done here, you know, nice, nice, very, very well planted and well thought out. So there's only one thing I've got to do is have a walk around the lake, see if I can spot uh, a quarry that's going to look at that uh, fly for me, the Hawthorne fly. Well, I guess there's quite a lot of fish out here in the deep pool, but at the end of the day, it goes right down there It goes right down there and it's worth having a good look around there as well while this light's good. There's already been some anglers on the lake. I'm a bit late, it's about half past 11. You can fish down those gravel stagings. I'll tell you my fancy immediately people, over that shady area over there, providing I can spot a fish. You see there's plenty of weed growth there for insects that hatch out under the water, but there's also a chance of the terrestrials, the stuff that comes off the land, the insects that come off from over there and get blown on here, i.e. the type of fly I'm talking about, the Hawthorn. So it could blow off from this way down, I just look for the ripple and try and get an idea of where those trout might move. There's one down there. You guys see, I'm going to point at that one. There's a rainbow of a couple of pounds down there and he's on what we call the windward side and I spotted a fish up here. So any uh, fly life coming off of these trees here it's going to get stirred up by that, probably sunk by the action of that blower. Anything else left is going to drift in the margins here. You see that by the scum that's along the edges there, so you're always looking for where the food might go because the trout will home in on that as well. So I think I'll have a walk around first. Yeah, there's that trout just there. Now what I fancy coming back is with this fly, if it sinks, and it should sink, is out here, I could let a fly drift around suspended about three feet down and put uh, a buoyancy aid on it, on the leader to help hold it up.
Now the nearest fly I could find is this one if you're going to see that there which is a, a sort of a black ant but you can see the two principal things are following on from a hawthorn fly. The size is about the same size as those hawthorn flies, the wild ones that I was catching in the net and also predominantly other than the size you've got two wing casings here and you've got those trailing legs and that is what the hawthorn fly is sort of famous for if you like is those trailing legs. So we're going to put it in the water. What I've done is I've got some of this. I've got some degrease in it in the shape of washing up liquid in an old container. You smear that up and down on the leader and that helps the leader to sink and the fly to get it down. So the first thing I'm going to do is look and see how fast my fly is sinking through the water. And then I can use in my mind one second, two second, three second, four second. Because when you've got a water like this, it's very clear. It's always difficult trying to judge the actual depth that the fish is swimming at. You think, oh, that fish is just a foot below the surface. You could be way out, got the fly too high, and the fish is actually three feet below the surface because the water is so painfully clear. It's lovely. You spot the fish, but they're not always easy to catch. So for clear waters like this, you need a big long peak hat. Now this one is for bone fishing, not necessarily bone fishing, it can be tarpon. Anywhere you're fishing in shallow water, generally abroad, I've got this one in Florida, it's got a neck and ear flap. So it keeps the sun off your neck and ears, or you just fold it up because we don't get that much sun in the UK. We got it today, but of course there's not much heat in it. In Florida, there's a lot of heat in it. But what it has got is this very long peak and that shuts down any light from above and a pair of polarizing glasses so I can see I can I can see virtually under the water. So first things first, I've got a nine foot lead of about I think it's six pounds, just over the length of the rod. That's all I have. The rest of this is just regular fly line. You can use what you want. People say what rod, what reel. So I I don't even know. I can't even read it on it. But it's it's like average would be I'd say over here six or seven weight so I'm just going to blip the fly in that fly has actually got a little tungsten head to it so it should sink get it wet first and I'll put it in front of me so I see how fast it sinks through the water one two three four it's going down quite fast I've even seen a trout there yeah this, I've seen a trout wait for this I'm, I'm timing the countdown of the fly and as I lifted it a trout's, a trout's gone zooming around and I'm 99% sure he would have taken it if I hadn't pulled the fly out of his mouth. Small one, only a small one, was probably a rainbow. But what it does tell me is um, those fish want to come up off the bottom because a lot of insects, if they're hatching from the bottom, they're going up towards the surface. They hatch out down on the lake bed, they work their way up, they hatch out, they get their wing casings, they fly away, they go into the trees or wherever the bush is, then they generally would come back and then you know, they breed and the whole cycle, they lay their eggs, they go to the bottom, the whole cycle starts again. With fishing with a hawthorn fly, a terrestrial, it's a, it's a blowing off. It's blowing off into the water, so it's liable to be on the surface, so the trout should be looking on the surface for it. So I don't want to go too deep with this, because otherwise I'll be below where I call the hawthorn or terrestrial flies are liable to be blown in the water. Point two, when you're looking around, and that's the only fly I've got that's the right size for the whole thing, is just look around, make sure your back cast is clear. If you cast, also judge, although you've got the fly in front of you, so let's say you're lowering the fly down like this through the waters and getting the count down, that's going down vertically. So it's pulling the line vertically, there's no surface tension on the leader. If you're casting out like this is laying flat on the surface that fly's got to pull that big length of leader down through the surface film so if you're fishing in close and I'm catching trout there you know like just off your leader length no problem at all the countdown of say four seconds will be right if I'm doing a long cast the countdown is going to be slower because the fly's got to pull that leader down so you can maybe go a little bit long if you're counting down four you might want to go six something like that that's just a tip totally awesome tip tip number one already now there's a trout down there i'm just watching if he's got any reaction to it at all and he doesn't right i now know the countdown technique so what you do now is have a walk around the fishery try and spot a fish and get yourself in a position to cast a fly to it
There's some very shallow water just in here. Hopefully you can see it. Now you can get fish go through that, but they feel nervous going in shallow water. Generally, you know, there's a light coloured one there. They'll be in there looking for rubbish on the surface, insects, anything like that that's drifting around. So I'm just going to have a wander along. That fish down there looks like he's very catchable. It's a light coloured rainbow by the look of it. I'm just going to walk here. Just have a a little look and I'm using the any bankside vegetation as a sort of screen. I see a nice fish over the back by the weed there. Guys, I think I'm going to set up second fish moving there. There's a pike down there I can see, a little small pike. And this is a lovely sunny spot and there's a carp there. Now, what I'm going to do is leave my net just here. So I've got easy access and I've got a bit of mobility going up and down here looking. Right. Well, I've had a go up there in the uh, shallow water and can't seem to get a response. I've had one ch chase from a trout, but I'm still drawn back to this a deeper pool on this side. I haven't even been around the other side yet. So I think I'm just going to work these margins with short casts, just dropping the fly if I see a fish. I feel that might be my best chance in this bright weather because they're going to like this shady area. There's two spots they're going to like really. It's over by that blower in deep water and around here in this big shaded area but because as the day goes on the sun is going to go round in the sky and that's going to light up a bit more and perhaps move the fish around because the shade angle will change. Well I told you I like this spot now just down there off the end of my rod talking about this scum the weed that drifts and builds up there's a trout cruising around under there using the shade from this tree and the shade from that little weed mat there because there'll be insects in there as well I dare say they've been blown in this has all been blown in you know leaves bits and pieces there all in one little pack here and that's what will be happening with the insects the terrestrials that are blowing in off the land so I'm just going to stand on this corner here I'll probably guys have to go to head cam because I can't fish with this pole and attached to this lead like this it's just too difficult but I feel if he comes out there again I've seen him twice come around there if he comes again I'm just going to blip the fly at him and see if I can get a response there's a couple of fish crews in this weed mat area down here just roll the fly out let it sink there's one right in front of me goodness me now oh, here, here's one underneath the weed mat just come out from under the weed mat he just wants to go back into it I'm going to try and intercept him here he comes yeah, he's a spooky one well people I've had a good old cast around had a look but I can't really get the mobility I want with my um, my rigid mount for my camera so I've got a head strap I'm going to put the head mount camera and that way I can, I've got both hands free and I can put the microphone lead down inside my jumper and hopefully I can fish and get you guys maybe the action as well. It's much easier walking along like this. There's a trout. Let's see if we can get a fly in front of him. He's just straight down there. Check the back cast. Get a bit of fly line out the uh, from the rod rings. And there's another trout over the back there. Here comes one, here comes one, here comes one. Oh, that was so close. That was so close, people. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh. I 
I'm not even sure there's not more than one fish out there. He's just in amongst that suspended weed, I'm going to call it, where it's growing off the bottom. Now I've lost him now in the ripple. Here he is coming in close. Oh, he's so close. He's looking at it, he's obviously been fished for before. Always worth coming back because he might, might take again. My problem is the wind's blowing right into my face. So the food should come up here. You can see the scum on the surface there. So any insect's going to be about there, but that was one spooky trout. He just snapped at the fly, pulled the fly line, and I didn't set the hook. There's a second fish around there. There's one right near the bottom. Oh, he turned away, people. That's almost sure as a brownie. Oh, look, I'm going to try not to move. That's a brown trout, people. He's much deeper. They like colder water. They're going to stay deeper. Wouldn't that be sweet to hook a brownie? But they are tough critters to get to take the fly. Again, I shall remember that that, that brown trout's usually fairly a territorial species. He's going to work that area. There might be a spring that comes up there and he just likes that particular spot, it's his little territory. So there's a rainbow cruising out on the edge of the weed and there's a brown trout lying down in here. I'll check both those out and hopefully no other anglers see them. Now just moving along the bank, you see this lovely willow here? There's two, three fish around that area but the brownie is just in close in between the uh, in fact there's a fish moving is he going to turn he's going to turn maybe i'll go from this way and cast backwards i think there's several trout just lying in there one is a nice fish now i'm just going to lay the net just down here i mean that is some spot that lodge isn't that it's no question that is a place to enjoy a coffee or a nice glass of wine with your lunch fish right in front of me. He is having none of it. Right boys, hook up at long last, at long last, it has not, it has not been easy, it has not been easy on the whole horn fly. This fish raced over, for some reason, 5,000 casts later, the fish took, I don't understand that, but maybe there's just not enough of those hawthorns on the uh, on the surface yet and as I say the wind is the wind is off my back I'm thinking about it I'll take a, a bold stab in the dark and say over there by the houses there's not many trees close to the water so one assumes any blow off of terrestrials are going to come back on the grass so maybe if the wind was coming from this way then I would get uh, more action but nevertheless I shall settle for one fish just to show you that the hawthorn fly does indeed work. Even if it falls off. No, don't say that, Graham, don't say that. Don't say that, mate. 
Anything could happen. I think it's a rainbow. Good scrapper, really good scrapper. Jamie's over there on his little toy tractor, chopping all the lawn up. It's mown like the uh, Augusta golf course here. So you're gonna get a bit of noise, but it's an ideal putting green surface. You're gonna have to live with the noise on the machine there, people. It's the way it is. Here he comes, here he comes. Let's get him in. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you for one nice fish. Well, that's a nice looking rainbow, lovely big white tail on it. You can see the rainbow just in there, might be a bit glary in the sun there. Lovely looking fish and there's, there's sort of my problem. You see the fly is just literally nicked in the top there. I've had very few sort of takes, positive takes, and that one has just nipped in the top of the lip there. Tell you what, I was pleased with it, it's nice to get a rainbow. Floating line, lovely looking fish. So there you go. Lawn mowing stopped for a while. It gives me time to tell you that there's going to be some trout for tea. It might be cooked in a frying pan or might camp for it. it might even be smoked trout. And they don't have to be monster trout to give you some good action. So that's good. Really pleased with that. I feel it's time for lunch. The trout are feeding. Maybe I should be packing up if they're coming on like this. Okay. Let's get on that balcony.